Change your diet, change your life, change the planet. Oh, this is really hard. The uh, snow is covered with a crust from some rain we got. And every step you take, your foot punches through the crust and it just sucks all the energy out of your quads. And then when your foot tries to come up, the toe has to pull through the crust. It's exhausting. It's not the great moments that make life great. It's the little things. Like the sound of that trickling brook. I'm running along, drudgingly through the snow, breaking through the crust. It's so loud, every step like crashes into my ears as well as my legs. And then I happen across that stream and I stop and just listen to the trickle. The little things that we often don't even hear because we're making so much noise in our life that we just go right by them. So I'm taking a moment, stopping, and I'm listening to that stream. I'm also catching my breath. <laughs> this is really exhausting. And I'm listening to a lecture on quantum physics and the discovery of electrons, protons, neutrons, basically how we came to the understanding that we have. And it makes me think about the little things and the impact that little things can have. And we often overlook their impact because little things seldom behave like big things. In fact, when they discovered the electron and were trying to describe what is an electron, and we still at this point really don't know how to describe an electron, but Richard Feynman, who's one of the world's most famous physicists, said that the way things behave at the small scale is completely unlike how they behave at the large scale. You can't look at quantum behavior and then apply it to the larger world. It just doesn't work. So when I notice little things or when I take small actions, I don't compare them to the grand scheme. I don't compare them to the end result because you can't. So I've learned to look at my actions on kind of a subatomic level, you know, to use an analogy, where the little actions are like the electrons, protons, and neutrons that don't behave like the, the larger picture. But added up over time, they create the larger picture. So you may look at your small action and say, what impact is this going to have? What difference is this going to make? Well, think about the butterfly flapping its wings and causing a hurricane two months later, you know, a thousand miles away. You know, we've all heard that story. And maybe that is a little bit exaggerated, or maybe it's not. Maybe these little tiny electrons that we can't see, maybe they're actually making everything around us. Because they are. The smallest things eventually add up to have the biggest impact. The tiniest little things can change the world. The tiniest little things can change your life. Yesterday, in all honesty, was one of the worst days of my life. Not because any one particular thing happened but because a lot of things were happening and a lot of things weren't happening and the stress and the anxiety of it all and it just added up to crush me and I had a hard time getting out of bed I did a, a short run in my boots in the snow I did 40 minutes uh, which is still a major effort but I didn't get anything else done I just I hung out in bed the rest of the day and couldn't do anything couldn't function it was just it was physically painful just to be awake like I wanted to go to sleep but I couldn't and I could let that add up, too. I could turn yesterday into today, and then tomorrow, and then the next day, and the next day. Or I can just do my best to make it through the day, whatever it takes to get through that day, and then wake up and see a brand new day. Not wake up and remember what yesterday was like, and remember how miserable I was, and remember how much pain I was in, physically, and emotionally, spiritually, suffering. I can just look at the next thing in front of me, the next step today. I wake up, it's a new day, what little thing can I do? Today I got dressed and I drove to the mountain much earlier than I normally do. 
I'm up here and it's only a little after noon, which is early for me to train. And I'm running, doing a ridiculously hard workout. But not because I, I said this is what I must do. No, I just took little steps and then suddenly I ended up at a trailhead that I've never been on before. I've never run this trail. I don't know where it goes. I don't even know where I am. But it doesn't matter. I'm here and I'm just putting one step in front of the other. I'm listening to a great lecture. I'm educating myself. I'm having great thoughts. I'm listening to a stream and I feel totally different than I did yesterday. Dramatically so. Because I took little steps. How could those little steps ever seem to add up to transform my experience? They do. If you get this guy out of the way. Because this guy is going to tell you that things are going to continue to be bad because the things that were on my plate yesterday are still on my plate. And the things that are not happening in my life, they're still not happening. I've got one week from today till the Empire State Building. One week to the biggest race of the year for me. And I've been busting my butt. My training is way ahead of last year. I'm exhausted every single day. My legs are screaming at me every single day. Uh, and I don't know what's going to happen. I'm scared. I'm scared for this race. I'm really nervous and it's a week away. But I'm still going to keep taking steps and I'm going to have bad days. But don't let them add up. Don't let one bad day build into something else. Because a bad day is a concept. A bad day is a thought process. It's not a moment. A day is not a moment. So as quick as you can, jump back into the moment. Jump back into putting on your clothes. Jump back into brushing your hair, brushing your teeth. Jump back into the shower. But when you pull back the shower curtain, make sure you look for spiders first. And if you know somebody like me, who has bad days every now and again and just can't get out of bed and no matter who you think I am there are days that I just can't get anything done make sure you pull back that shower curtain with caution when you address somebody like me most often people show up in my life and they just rip back the curtain and they turn on the water full blast otherwise known as their advice because it comes out like a stream of water out of their mouth and they didn't look for spiders first they didn't look to see where I was they didn't look to see how small I was that day or how frail I was that day. They just assumed Tim is Tim and I'm just going to blast him with my water advice and he's going to take it and it's going to cure him and what ends up happening is I get washed down the drain because they didn't look first. So this is something I'm learning too when dealing with other people because even though I understand what it's like to have someone just, you know, blast the water on, blast the advice on, sometimes I do the same to others. And I have to stop and say, wait a minute, maybe they're smaller than I think. Maybe they're f more frail than I think right now. Maybe I should just turn it on a trickle and see how they react. Or maybe I should find out where they're at first before I give them any advice. I'm two and a half miles into the George D. Aiken wilderness. And even where I left the car on the highway is in the middle of the wilderness. So I'm in the middle of nowhere right now. And uh, I found an old gravestone out here in the middle of the woods surrounded by a couple apple and cherry trees so it must have been a farm way back when these are two sisters that died in 1842 one of them was uh, one of them was two years eight months and the other was one year and six months now in the year 2012 we look at this area of Woodford as you know the remote wilderness and in the 1840s there were people living up here trying to make it work up on the mountain you know working the hard life. So next time you think your life is tough, think about these people and what they had to go through. So sometimes all we see in life is tears, but if we just change our perspective a tiny little bit, we can see something entirely different. I'm in the middle of a huge blowdown now, where hundreds of trees in this little small area have all been blown over. I don't know if it was uh, something that happened during Hurricane Irene back in September, or what it is, but uh, it makes me think. You can look at this and say, oh, what a shame. All these trees have been blown over. You know, it's ugly, it's hideous. You can't move through it anymore. You have to keep climbing over these trees. Animals get stuck in it. They can't travel through and it just looks awful. But in reality, when a tree falls down or blows over like this, it creates habitat for smaller creatures. 
animals that normally don't survive as well out in the open or in open tree cover can do much better in a blowdown. For instance, the little guys that hide out from the owls and the hawks and eagles, they can do so much, much better in this brush that has fallen down, like rabbits, squirrels, chipmunks, all kinds of guys like that have a much better chance when they have blowdowns to hide in. So you can look at this and see destruction, or you can look at it and see opportunity. So when I think about what has been happening to me lately, and especially yesterday, it felt like my whole life just got blown over. I can step back and look at, look at it from a different perspective and see that now all those little tiny actions have protection from the environment. They have protection from the world. They have protection from the elements and from the harsh forces that are looking to do me harm. These little guys have, now have places to hide and build and grow strong and be nurtured and to eventually snowball up to the size where they can stand on their own in the world and withstand the slings and arrows that come at me. So sometimes a blowdown in life can be a good thing because it allows you to nurture the little tiny drops of life, those little moments that need protection in their infancy until they're big enough to get out there and stand on their own. Okay, I'm now seven miles into this run. It's probably gonna be 10 miles long. I am so exhausted that I don't even notice anymore. I'm just in this like alternate space listening to this great lecture and just kind of floating through the world. And uh, it's uh, quite a profound experience. And I'm glad that I have the opportunity to do this and share it with you. <laughs> Two hours and 36 minutes and 9.65 miles later, I am done because I took a single baby step. Imagine what's possible for you if you just get yourself in motion one tiny step at a time. 